And yes, I know instinctively to turn the wheel right, but, <laughs> but the car is not telling me anything via anything. Welcome to another video of Car Plebs. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the top five industry trends, which in my opinion, are leading to the decrease of fun, excitement, experience, and sound, which is the reason why you wanna buy a car and a sports car. So please bear with me as we talk about the five points in this video. By the way, we're going to be featuring the Alfa Romeo in this video, a pseudo sporty-ish sedan car. Now you may have heard that on many occasions, Jason Camisa, call this car the best sedan or sports sedan currently available on the market well i think he's absolutely wrong nevertheless what i want to mention is that this video will not focus on the alpha we will be talking about other industry manufacturers as well it's purely that the alpha will serve as the example during this video all right so let's get started number one digitalization all of these screens that are happening we have in this alpha a screen in the middle a screen on the right connected to carplay it's all great technology but there are three main topics or three main discussion points that need to be mentioned here one is reliability of said displays who knows how long they will remain as shiny and bright as they are today maybe there will be dead pixels on this display maybe the backlight will stop working etc and of course they're going to be more expensive to replace than on a mechanical a mechanical gauge cluster or if there were no display at all you wouldn't have this issue at all in the first place second topic is the overall safety of such displays of course during driving at night even if you put the brightness on the lowest level you can still observe the brightness and the luminosity of the display the second thing is that luckily this car doesn't have that in the alfa romeo but some cars have touch interfaces and in that sense you know you need to hunt for the finger and many studies have shown already that touch displays are one of the factors or are potentially causing car crashes because of course you have to look with your eyes to the display and you can't necessarily focus on what's happening on the road yes they're trying to figure out other alternatives with haptics so basically when you depress your finger you feel a reverberation something like you would do on maybe older phones now main culprit in my eyes right now is the audi or the Volkswagen group. So even some new cars, for example, the Golf, which now has a touchpad on the steering wheel, a touchpad instead of the buttons here, a touchpad for your HVAC controls. I mean, why? Something like this is so purely intuitive as it is today. I have a dial here, it works. Then similarly for the HVAC, I know that if I rotate the temperature dial, it's going to equate with one click to 0.5 degrees Celsius. Thus, I don't need to look at some damn display. So in general, I think that is really to the detriment. The last point is mechanical obsolescence or obsolescence of the car in general. You might be driving a 996, you look at a 997, you're considering the gauge cluster might look better, might, might look nicer, you might like the interior design, but you're not going to purchase a 997 because of the middle display or because of the nav display, absolutely not. But on the other hand, in today's cars, all of these displays are being powered by processors now what do we know about processors every 10 years the last processor is potentially obsolete and the graphics are going to look the same if you look at a phone from 10 years ago you're not going to use it because it's going to irritate you it's going to bother you so i think that the car industry is using exactly these displays to incentivize newer purchases because even an audi a8 that you purchased today might be a fantastic car in 10 years but then you're going to look at the displays of the newest a8 and then you're going to think wow my a8 is outdated as opposed to the newest model similarly with the golf you're going to have a perfectly fine working 10 year old golf but you're going to look at the new one and maybe there'll be 3d animations it'll be faster animations it will be nicer animations the resolution is going to be better and you just can't have that argument with mechanical gauge clusters and with me mechanical buttons number two nvh or noise vibration and harshness so i'll show you what that means right now this alpha has 200 horsepower it is a gasoline engine and it's actually quite fast and now we're going to accelerate and it's really funny i can't even feel anything really happening yes the sensor in my derriere is telling me that yes, we're moving at a, or we're accelerating, why not? On the other hand, the noise is not there. Any vibrations, I'm not getting any vibrations. Nothing is happening, nothing is indicating to me that this is an experience, you're now accelerating. This is a sporty car or this is quite a fast car. Similarly with the newer sports cars. 
what is the implication to me as a driver that I'm driving something that is moving at an accelerated pace? I get the, a little bit of wind noise. I get some reverberations through the steering wheel. I get some inputs from all over around me that is telling me this car is moving ex extremely quickly. Maybe I have a loss of traction that's going to transfer to that. Similarly, let's do an emergency brake. Again, here is a nice example. We did an emergency braking scenario and I didn't even feel the ABS through the pedal. So what is telling me that I'm driving this car in a sporty manner? I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's um, my body's moving around on the seat, something like that. But honestly speaking, this is a travesty in my eyes. I mean, yes, it's objectively, it's a fast car. It's faster probably than my 996 on the Nürburgring. Who knows? And I don't care. But the point is that this is supposed to feel, it's supposed to give me feedback. It's supposed to give me an emotional background. It's supposed to make my fingers tingle and it absolutely does not and this is where nvh plays a key role the general public they want to feel that the car is silent that you don't feel anything that you're not getting any unwanted noises potentially any reverberations that you're simply cruising along and the average buyer sadly would want a car that drives itself they wouldn't want to even touch the steering wheel they don't want to hear anything they don't want to feel anything they don't want to do anything related to the car they don't want to hear the engine why would you want to hear the engine vibrations it's a freaking car it's supposed to be like my microwave i put in my whatever i press start and then in two minutes i'm going to get a finished product so that's their way of enjoying traveling from a to b now i think this is absolutely terrible for the automotive industry specifically the sports segment like the 911s like the sporty bmws like this alfa romeo that you're now getting an experience that is well yeah i mean what can i say it's not giving me a tingle number three Clickety here, clickety there, click, 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 click. The manual versus automatic discussion. So in my personal opinion, anything that classifies as partially sporty should have a manual transmission. This Julia is equipped with the industry leading, industry famous ZF 8-speed automatic transmission. Now, as a preface, I will say one thing. I am absolutely aware that the performance of such a transmission depends heavily and mostly on its tuning. Nevertheless, the Julia has been reported by other car reviewers as having one of the better implementations of the ZF 8-speed. You also receive these beautiful paddles, so I think that I am equipped to say that this is one of the better experiences to be had with the ZF 8-speed. Before we get into that, what I want to talk about is a recent search we did with my friend uh, David where we were looking into M2 BMW prices and we were looking at how many percentage-wise M2s there are with a manual a gearbox in Germany. Sadly, the case is that there are only approximately 8 to 9% of these cars with a manual transmission. So why would you buy the M2 if not for having the full-blown sports car experience? How does the DCT, which is a fantastic gearbox, even compete with a manual? Yes, it's fast. Yes, it's faster around the track. Yes, it has a faster 0 to 60 or 0 to 100 run. But honestly, like we shouldn't care about such things. They're objectively not important in a sports car experience. I mean, are, are those buyers really just looking at the times? Is that the reason why they're foregoing one of the best automotive experiences that you can still purchase today? I just personally don't get this. And then if we talk about the ZF, which is in my, my opinion, still a torque converter automatic. Let's put it into manual. We're now in sixth gear and let's drop it two gears. It still takes way too long. And I just don't get how auto reviewers are calling this transmission per se one of the better ones. It's so much slower than the one in the E92 M3 that I used to own. Yes, it's responsive, but you can still feel a noticeable lag in the, in the shifts. So in my eyes, yes, it's a cool transmission. Yes, it's fun, but at the end of the day, if I could have gotten this car with a manual gearbox, I would have. The thing is that despite this car having one of the best implementations of the of the eight speed, I always tend to leave it in, in automatic just because what? I'm clicking a button, this is a button. People need to realize that they, these are buttons at the end of the day. <laughs> it's not connected to the transmission, so yeah. So if you are in the market to purchase a sports car today, please get the manual. I'll be grateful in the future when I can buy it 70% off. 
number four. So if you haven't considered subscribing to the channel, please do so as it helps grow our channel. So now let's talk about the nannies, things like traction control. So right now the car is set into dynamic mode. And look how it can do some amazing power slides. Full lock, full throttle. And nothing is happening under steer, under steer. Now the fun part of the Alpha specifically is in many other cars that you can't anymore disable fully traction control. So you have in principle a car that has all of the minuses or negatives of being rear wheel drive but you can't disable it to have some fun. Again, full lock, full throttle dynamic. It's abysmal frankly speaking, understeer, understeer, it's not letting the rear go out one bit. Let's try with, at some higher speed. Again, nothing is happening. It's kind of funny, to be honest. I think people, if some people are watching me right now, they must be laughing. What is this guy doing? He has an Alfa Romeo. He must be sliding and drifting. So it's funny. You can put so much throttle input. Look, nothing's happening at all. Funnily enough, this car has also lane keep assist. It has also blind spot monitoring. And those are all great features in principle. But the problem is they have made me worse as a driver. After a few thousand kilometers trip in this car where I have the luxury of not really checking my blind spot because I know that it's gonna blink at me or beep at me if there is a car in my blind spot. Then I sat back down in the 911s and I was I almost crashed into another car because I forgot that like I don't have those features. So it's kind of in a way, yes, it's a safety feature, but it bothers me. And this car specifically, look, we go into second gear, into a corner, and full throttle. Nothing understeer really more than anything. And it's kind of sad. It's really cold outside. We're having we have winter tires on. And again, let's wait for the cars to pass. And I, I'm well aware that some other uh, companies, something like BMW has full traction off and all of those features. I'm just saying that in general, traction control, if you can't disable it, it's a pity. And second of all, it has become way more intrusive than in the past. Again, full throttle, second gear, and see only a little bit but it still interferes a lot so it's it's unpredictable in a way so sometimes it wants to slide sometimes it doesn't slide again third gear third gear full throttle yes it slipped a bit but i mean again it's not giving me enough progression and then when the brakes kick in you can really feel that so i'm not a big fan of having such traction control number five let's talk about inputs what do we as sports car or potential sports car drivers want to have from the car we want to have pedal reaction so we want to feel for example abs kicking in i want to feel the brakes biting in the brake pedal i would like to feel the accelerator and i would like to know that it's directly connected and most importantly i would ha like to have some feedback so objectively again the alfa romeo here is a fantastic car it really is it has a lot in terms of chassis tuning it's phenomenal etc but then when you have a more of a spirited drive i know that the brake pedal is in principle a actuated button so i can't feel anything happening there so i can see obviously that i'm slowing down i can feel the cheese in the seat but then when i accelerate again a button and the worst part of all of that is that the steering wheel is again overly power assisted despite me being in dynamic mode but the point is i can't really feel anything and again see i can't feel anything in the steering wheel i don't feel nothing in the steering wheel yes i can feel the chassis moving but nothing is translating here no imperfection in the road no nothing and that's again fine enough it provides i guess a level of comfort to some people but then for me if i'm if I want to drive it aggressively and I want to get into a corner, I don't feel nothing happening. Again, here I'm basically full rotation here. And yes, I know instinctively to turn the wheel right, but, <laughs> but the car is not telling me anything via anything. 
And again, the Alfa Romeo here is not the main culprit. It's in every car. I've recently driven some newer BMWs, some newer Volkswagen cars, and they're all in principle the same. And it really irks me that we have come to an age in the automotive industry where this is meant to be a microwave, a dishwasher, and it's not supposed to be a piece of emotion, something you really, really attach to and you just can't wait to drive. Yes, modern automotive technology has improved significantly our day-to-day -day comfort. And yes, if I'm looking for a city car, if I'm looking for something very basic, I'm very happy for it to be easy to use. But I remember the days when even a basic car from a lower segment was absolutely fun to drive, where you felt everything through the steering wheel, where you felt everything through the pedals, where you had at least a semblance of an automotive experience. Whereas nowadays, sadly, this is going away, away. And the more we progress towards electrification, towards electric cars, this will really only get worse, where it will become more of a toy. The car will become more of, even more of an appliance. And I'm really sad to see that happen. Thank you very much for watching another video of Car Plebs. Please subscribe and take care.